which the heart is looking for, which memory is it seeking? And on one such day, I looked up at the sky and I saw a flock of birds, a large flock of birds flying. When I looked at them, a song came to me. Where are you flying? Flying so high. Where are you going? Wave me a bye. Come down near me. Rest a while. Tell me your stories. Then go back high. High, high. Back to the sky. High, high. Back to the sky. And as I was singing this song, what came to me was a video which I had watched once, which was about wisdom of geese. You know that the geese stay with each other and they fly together. But if a bird is injured, if one of the geese, when one of the goose is injured, two other geese accompany the bird and they come down and they land and they stay with the bird till the time the bird either survives and can fly again or it dies. And then the remaining two birds fly away, leaving that dead bird there. Well, this brought me to another story which I had read, which was written by Eric Miller and told by Ruth's daughter. And that is the story I'm going to share with, it, with you today. It is the story of a bird with a broken wing. A large flock of birds were flying north. Or were they flying south? I just know that they were flying in the sky in a V formation. I wondered where they were flying. Actually, they were flying from north to south. Because in some parts of the world, like in north, winters are very severe. The snow covers the ground and there can be no food which can be found by the birds. So in order to survive, they fly to south so that they can be warm and they can have food and they can survive the winter which would be there in north. And then once the weather changes again or the season changes, they go and they fly back to the south. When this particular flock of birds was flying, they were just not flying and they didn't just make a pretty sight. They were also singing a song and the song was Fly, 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 we must, winter is setting in. Fly, 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 we must, winter is setting in. Fly, 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 we must to find a warm cocoon. Fine, fly, fly, we must to find a warm cocoon. And like this, flying and singing, they encouraged each other. But since they were flying since morning and now it was late afternoon, they were feeling tired and the head of the birds could sense that. So she said, why don't we land, land in this particular forest on top of the trees? And they all landed there. Then she called out to them and she said, are you all okay? Are you tired? Do you want to rest more and stay here tonight? Well, all the other birds said we can fly again. But there was this one particular bird, this young male bird, Ru who said, uh, actually, I am very tired. My wing is hurting a lot. A few days back, I was playing with my friends and I injured the wing. Now, I think with all this flying, it is hurting and it is, I think it is broken. I can't fly anymore. Is it okay? Can I stay here? Uh, you can come back for me later. Immediately, his friend said, no, I'll stay with you if you want to stay here. You don't have to stay here alone. I won't come back for you. I'll stay with you now. But that little bird's mother, the friend's mother said, you cannot stay here. I won't let you. And the friend said, please, mother, let me stay with Rue. Rue is hurt. Rue is injured. He needs my help. But the mother would have none of it. Now, rest of the birds in flock looked at each other. What shall they do? They didn't want to leave Rue alone there, but they didn't want to stay either. So they started discussing amongst themselves whether Rue would be able to make it through the winter. Just then when they were talking, they heard a voice which said, Hello birds, hello my brothers and sisters. And they looked around. They couldn't see anyone. Then they looked down and they saw a deer 
a squirrel and a rabbit. The deer nodded at the squirrel and squirrel quickly climbed up the tree and said, We couldn't help overhearing you. We know that you have a boy bird with a broken wing. We can look after the boy bird. You can fly away if you want. <sighs> the entire flock heaved a sigh of relief. They said bye to Roo and they got ready to fly, telling him that they would return. But Roo's friend was very sad. He just hugged Roo and, Roo and he said, I don't want to go. I hope you understand. My mother won't let me stay. And Roo hugged him back and he said, go. It's okay. And all the birds again flew away in a V formation, flying there flying and singing their song. Now suddenly, it became very quiet. Roo looked around. What shall it do? If winter comes in, it would need shelter. So he thought, let me make a nest. And he started singing and going, climbing down the tree because it couldn't fly. So he sang, Make, make, make my nest. Winter is setting in. Make, make, Make my nest, winter is setting in. He went down and he picked up some twigs and some leaves and he started to climb up the tree. And just as it started, Rook said, What are you doing? Ru said, Ah, oh, sir, I was planning to make a nest on one of your branches. Did you take my permission? said the tree. Ru looked and said, uh, so, may I have your permission to make a nest on one of your branches? The tree said, no. In fact, I don't want you to make a nest on me. Birds are very noisy. They keep singing. They make a lot of mess. I don't want you to make a tree or make a nest on my branches. Go and find another tree. Bruce said, sorry. And he got off and he went to another tree, singing softly. Make 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 my nest winter is setting in make 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 my nest winter is setting in and as he reached that tree and began to climb up the tree said stop and Ru said tree sir can i make a nest here the tree said no i don't like birds go away find another tree so Ru went down oh he was sad he stopped singing he went to another tree and he said, may I please make a nest on your branches? And that tree too refused. Now poor Ru, what could it do? He looked around. Which of these trees would let me make a nest? Just then, Rabbit came back and said, Ru, Ru, you want to find a tree? I know a tree, a perfect tree. It is a tree with a hollow in its trunk. You can make a nest there. Come, come, I'll teach you. And Ru followed the rabbit and reached that tree. And he said, tree, sir, I have a problem. I have a broken wing. My flock has left. I need a warm and a safe place to stay in. Can you please let me make a nest in the hollow of your trunk? I promise I won't be noisy. I promise I won't sing. And I won't be messy. The tree looked kindly at Ru and said, Ru, I'm sorry you hurt. I hope your wing heals soon. We are all a little broken, aren't we? Feel free to make a nest in the hollow of my trunk. And feel free to sing as well. Because what will a bird do if it can't even sing its song? You're welcome to stay here till the time you want. Ru said, thank you. And soon the deer and the squirrel and rabbit came and they helped Ru find the right twigs to make a nest in the hollow of the tree. They even helped him to find nuts which he could hide, that he could eat all those when the weather became really, really cold. And soon the weather actually turned cold. The snow began to fall and the white sheet covered the ground. Ru would look out from its, uh, the hollow nest of the tree, from its home, and look at the white snow spread around. 
Sometimes he would look for hours and sometimes he would just hung a, hum a song. Sometimes the squirrels came and they spent time with him. And at times he went for a little walk with the squirrels too. Well, Ru wasn't really lonely. But at night, he would sing a song. And the song would reverberate in the tree. And his song was, Sometimes you have to find your strength. Find your strength within. No one can heal your broken wing. Not even your king. Would you all like to join me? And sing with me? Sometimes, all of you, sometimes you have to find, <laughs> okay. sometimes, sometimes, sing, sing, sometimes. sometimes you have to find your strength, you have to find your strength, find your strength within, find your strength within. No one, no one, one can heal your broken wing. Can heal your broken wing. Not even your kin. Not even your kid. Can you sing it together with me? Sometimes you have to find your strength. Find your strength within. No one can heal your broken wing. Heal your broken wing. Not even your kin. Not even your kin. Find your strength within. Find your strength within. The song would reverberate in the tree and the tree would feel the song as its own and began to really like Ru. Then sometimes it also wondered whether Ru felt sad or he felt bitter or he felt that his friends or his skin wouldn't come back for him. Would they really come back? Tree used to wonder but only time could tell. Well months passed and soon summer was setting in again. There was warmth everywhere. The snow began to melt. And Ru would every day wait for his skin to come back. But for next 10 days, they did not. And one day, Ru was sleeping in his home, the hollow of the tree, when he heard sounds outside. They were all the flock of, you know, in his, which were there. And they would, they sat and they were yelling and they were saying that, Ru, Ru, where are you? We have come back for you. Come out. Are you there? Are you okay? Are you alive? Ru yelled, yes, I am fine. Actually, I am not only alive, I have healed. Come here. This is my tree. This is my home. And the birds went to him and Ru stepped out of his home. And his friend came running and hugged him and said, I am so glad to see you. And Ru said, so am I. I am glad you are all back. And he flew up and he said, see, I can fly now. And he flapped his wings and he hovered in the air. And then he sat on one of the branches of the tree. The flock was very happy. The Ru looked at the flock for a while. Then he looked back at the tree as if thinking of all the months he was there safe and warm and comfortable and dry and cozy. He said, Tree, I'm so grateful to you. You gave me shelter. You gave me time to heal. But it's time for me to go now. The tree smiled back at Ru. The squirrel and the deer and the rabbit also came out. And Ru said, Thank you so much for helping me. And thank you for letting me heal here. I will always remember you and I'll try to come back each year to meet you. And saying that, he looked at his flock and they all looked at each other and they flapped their wings and they flew away. The tree, the rabbit, the squirrel and the deer kept looking at Rue flying away till the time he faded. 
Rue went away, but the song still reverberates in the heart of the tree in its hollow space. And sometimes, when the tree can hold it no more and he can't contain the song, he starts singing. And you know what he sings? Sometimes you have to find your strength, find your strength within. No one can heal your broken wing, not even your kin. Find your strength within. Find your strength within. And if the wind ever carries this song to you, the story will come back and you will remember Rue, the little bird with a broken wing, which finally healed. Thank you. Very nice. Wonderful. Um, I like your songs. I think uh, yeah, many people now in the workshop are using songs, which is uh, uh, wonderful. Um, okay, uh, Seema, why don't you lead us through that four-part four, four part discussion? Remember the four questions I suggest to ask? Yeah. Remember them? Review, what, so, what are the four questions? I, I remember too, what does the story, um, what do you like in the story? Mm -hmm. And uh, what does the story one. Second, One is what, what do you story? like about the story and the way I told it. Then, okay. uh, I'm sorry, Eric. You'll have to remind me. <laughs> then, do you have any suggestions for improvement or any uh, additions to the story okay. that you would like? Okay. Three. Um, does it remind you of anything else? And yes. finally, um, what what do you get a message from the story? And uh, naturally, people will go out of order but try to keep them on this four uh, questions. And in each case, try to get a couple of responses from other people and then give your own answer. What did you especially like about the way you told the story or uh, about the story? Um, so, so go ahead. Okay, so uh, a question to all of you. What do you like about the story? Any of you could go, you could go pop on. <laughs> I, I like that you added that little piece of that uh, the bird was in the hollow of the tree and uh, was looking out at the snow. Yeah. You know, it was a very solitary experience for the bird to be a alone yeah. there for, for months. Uh, but with the, with the, you know, her animal friends, his animal friends, but still, uh, you, by, by saying, you know, he was sitting in the hollow and he was looking out at the snow, the snow was falling. It, it yeah. gave a sense of, um, you know, that there was a lot of time. Yeah. Okay. And I like that. I liked the, the tree that welcomes the little bird into its hollow. Okay. And, uh, you know, that is like very nicely detailed. Especially the part when, you know, the tree says we all are, you know, broken in some little way. So yeah, yeah. They all a little broken, broken aren't we? Broken. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Vani? Speaker? I'm, I'm, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you can hear me now? Yes, I can. Yes. See, I love the story, especially all the songs you added and okay. uh, the thing that touched me here in this story were two things. One, as Annapurna said, though I couldn't follow exactly what Annapurna just said, we had some echo issues here. Uh, when the tree says, aren't we all broken? <laughs> so I thought, yes, that is true. Because there were so many trees uh, that refused a uh, root to make a nest in their uh, on their branches. Yeah. This particular tree already had a hollow in its trunk. Yeah. So, in some way, I, I don't know, figuratively, literally, I thought it was a damaged tree in itself. Yeah. Not exactly, but it yeah. would relate yeah. to Rue. Rue yeah. had a broken wing and the tree had a hollow in its trunk. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, maybe I can help Rue and Rue can give me some companionship. Yeah. It could be great that we are there for each other during the long, severe winters. 
I I loved that part. And uh, the other thing I loved the way you narrated the whole story because you totally enjoyed it. You felt like you were part of the story. Any character, be it the tree or Rue or even the best friend, because the best friend feels he doesn't wants to leave Rue behind. He wants to be there for his friend, but uh, his mom is strict, overbearing, and she has her own reasons. She fears for this uh, son of hers. so she doesn't allow him to stay though i should say the best friend also played a great role in saying i really want to be with you ru but mm. I, i i can't because yeah. uh, my mom is there to control over me or something i got that message i love that a lot and yeah um this is about the story we'll come to the takeaway later so says i always rush thank you okay now uh, what about you Yeah, I would like to go with Vani, and uh, she told that uh, the tree was hollow, and so it could connect itself with Rue, that with the broken wing. Yeah. Uh, in that way, uh, the the story went on like uh, it could connect the tree and the Rue could connect both of them. Mm-hmm. So that or uh, that part was good, and also this um, as Anapurna said, we all broken in a way. That was that sentence even touched my me, and uh, the song was nice. You made it uh, into a tune, and that you know this uh, it felt like enjoying thing. It was good. It was absolutely good, and you were too much into the story that you forgot what's around you. <laughs> you were into the story as if in a, um, you know, Alice in Wonderland. You were in, <laughs> you were like Ru. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Renu is not here. <laughs> Eric, I. Who's left? I think you left to give feedback, ma'am. Uh, yeah. No, no. You know, you, you don't have to get everyone's uh, okay, uh, contribution. Okay, fine. Um, you know, I. Okay. Oh my so, God! The door. Just one second. Just one second. Seema, you were quite animated. Yeah. 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 Ye
that they were different from others at that particular point of time. The interesting thing was that the that rose wing could heal, but that hollow inside the tree would always remain. So I felt that somehow if the hollow can be filled, and that's why that song which reverberates in the hollow, it's kind of filling that hollow and you know, the tree feels and it's telling itself that you have to find your strength within. So that's what uh, uh, it meant to me. I took the liberty to add these songs to it. Um, and I, some, I feel somehow the songs can say things which sometimes we don't express. Uh, I mean, they express better. And um, um, that particular statement came to me, like when I was thinking the tree has got a hollow inside and Rue's got a broken wing. That was the time which struck me that we are all a little broken, aren't we? Only some people show it, some don't. Mm -hmm. So, that's... You know, that's uh, I, ah, Hema, hello. Uh, uh, actually, Ruth Potter, uh, who's from California, she was here for the storytelling festival some years ago. And she told that story, and then I wrote it down. So I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't compose okay. the story. I just wrote down okay. uh, her version, and she's not okay. sure where it comes from. We don't know if it was made up by, by an individual or if, um, or if it's a folk tale that comes from a, okay. from a community. Uh, okay. okay, so now related to the next part, um, uh, suggestions. Uh, you, you really did seem to enjoy telling it, which was great. Uh, but you have to keep an eye out, like I mentioned before with some other people, um, when it comes to parts in the story where a character is really in trouble or concentrating, um, at those parts, one does not want to keep smiling. Yes, you know? yes, I realize because, that. <laughs> uh, because you have to give yourself over and let the audience uh, get into the, um, the challenges, the difficulties of the story. So um, yeah. even though you are enjoying telling the story and uh, yeah. enjoying the situation, uh, you have to put that uh, aside when, when a character is really going through something. Because yes. you have to respect the, the reality of the yeah. characters' um, difficulties and, and struggles. But that was yeah. a very minor thing. You, you, you did uh, get serious, uh, you know, when, when you were describing the, um, the, uh, the bird looking for a, a hole in the tree. But I just suggest keep, keep that in mind. Yes, you're absolutely right. I realized I was smiling while I didn't want to smile. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes we smile just out of sort of nervousness or something. <laughs> wanting to reassure reassure ourselves or reassure our audience that everything is great. So if yeah. you're relaxed and confident, you, you won't have to smile so much. Okay. <laughs> Anybody else have any uh, suggestions uh, for improvement or anything like that? Seema, do you have any suggestions for yourself? Is there any way that, that you would... Oh, oh, by the way, I should add... I added the, 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 the uh, plot elements of the deer, the squirrel, and the rabbit. Okay. Because the way Ruth told it, the bird was left all alone. And I felt that was just too sad for my taste. Yeah. So I <laughs> added that those, those other animals. And of course, I um, had to make sure that they were all um, uh, vegetarian animals, <laughs> right? No. Because, because you don't want... Uh, uh, yes. you, you know, one, of, one person in one of my workshops some time ago made up a story where a lion hugs a koala bear and encourages the koala bear and says, you too can be strong, and, um, uh, uh, but it, it distracted me because I was worrying that the lion might eat the koala bear. Yeah. So you have to, you know, follow the, follow the situation. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I made sure that they were uh, that they were all vegetarian. But Actually, I'm it... so glad you added that. Hmm? I'm so glad you added that because for the bird to be left all alone would be terrifying for me also to read. Mm -hmm. Very sad also. But you make an interesting point about how the um, uh, the, the 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 different animals and birds getting together 
is, can be a metaphor for people of different castes and uh, races to get together. Mm. Okay, anyone else? Uh, suggestions? Seema, is there anything else? Next time you tell it, uh, is there any, any way that you would change it or improve it? Uh, one, I would, uh, I, uh, I think when I was telling you, I fumbled a little bit. I fumbled while telling a little bit because um, uh, it was, it was, I was just trying to tell the way it comes in my mind at that time. I had not prepared the, you know, uh, like, so I would like to uh, actually go over it, not memorize verbatim, not at all, but at least have the um, song and the, you know, have the entire thing clear in my mind. And uh, I would like to tell it better next time, I think. And I don't want to smile when I'm doing anything serious. Because I feel that that's one thing uh, I have realized about me. That uh, when, when there is something very serious, just to reassure the audience, I do tend to smile. Which I think I should not. <laughs> so that's what I feel about it. Good. And, uh, and yes, they were starting in the north. Because in the northern hemisphere, in the, in the winter, in the north, it gets cold. So yeah. birds and other animals, I guess birds especially, will migrate south for the winter, uh, yeah. uh, which is usually, um, at least in, in the USA, the winter is November, December, January. Those are the coldest months. Uh, okay. And then in March and April, they will come back up north. Okay, anyone else? Uh, any suggestions? Uh, and then the next question, does it remind you of anything else in your life? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Vani. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So, uh, when you said uh, the tree and the animals, they helped Ru without actually expecting anything from him. At least the tree could have uh, felt that connection, the emotional uh, uh, empathy because uh, as I, I imagined in my mind, even the tree was broken in, in yeah. some way. So yeah. I could instantly connect with Ru's yeah. feeling of yeah. being lonely. Yeah. So okay, so the tree could have thought about companionship when it offered uh, Ru its hollow to build the nest. But the animals, the squirrel, rabbit and deer, uh, really Ru couldn't actually show the gratitude to them. but. Still, they wanted to help Ru. So one thing I, I really liked about this is uh, these animals uh, show us that sometimes we may not get help from where we expect. They yeah. come from unexpected quarters. Ru yeah. might have never thought that he would have to depend on a tree and a rabbit, squirrel and a deer for help anytime. Uh, though his flock had to leave him behind, uh, help does come from unexpected quarters. Yeah. This reminded me of one story, a, a very simple short one. Can I just tell like in two lines? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I think most of you might have heard this. This is a real incident. I also read it in the newspaper. There was a penguin. There was a penguin which was badly broken. Uh, it, has, uh, it had uh, bruises all over its body. And uh, this was because of the oil spillage in the oceans. So it was almost like a man-made disaster. Uh, one time, it, it, uh, the waves took it to the shore. There was a 70 year old man. He, he really felt very bad about the penguin. He, he took him to his home, nursed him, gave him food, nurtured him, helped him heal. And after a few months, the penguin did go away. But since the last five years, every year there is a particular season where the penguin, it actually swims a lot of uh, distance and comes to this particular old man. It can remember. That was something I could uh, not comprehend how penguins can remember. It comes to the same place every year and it shows its gratitude to the old man. So when you told me uh, Ru will come every year to say thanks to the tree and to rabbit deer and squirrel, I thought uh, really also such things do happen. Even animals, uh, even if they don't have the sixth sense, they can still show their gratitude to this uh, old man who saved him and nursed him back. So I thought that was a great uh, example. It actually happens too. Thank you. 
So, in fact, I think animals do have an uncanny intuitive sense and ability. You know, we as human beings underestimate them. Yes. We, we don't consider that they can inhabit. We think we are, because we have a brain and we are, you know, the thinking race. So we can control everything, but they have the natural, they are more in alignment with nature. Like they, they sense the disasters. They don't need a weather forecaster to tell them that the you know season is going to change and you move away. They know it's inbuilt in them. So they are maybe in some ways more wise than us. So. That's it, Eric. Over to you. You uh, you are new, Eric. Yeah. Yes, so um, now if anyone has any final thoughts about the, uh, the takeaway, I mean, obviously um, the story is about, um, you know, that, uh, that, 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 that the character needs help and some other characters don't give the help, but some do. And uh, so it has a happy ending because some do. Uh, so yeah. but any, did, anyone, did anyone think of any proverbs or did anyone formulate the takeaway in, in any particular way? Uh, oh, a friend in, in need is a friend indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Any other thoughts about... They were uh, true friends. Because they no, they were true friends. Mm -hmm. The animals, yeah, yeah. animals are a well, bird. They were, they were really interested in the bird. They really wanted to help him and they were really true friends. So according to the uh, saying, they helped when he needed help. And so they are true friends, you can call them. Mm -hmm. Even though they were animals, they still had that, you know, uh, feeling to protect the bird that were, the wing was broken and to help. So that's good. Uh, Seema. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, you told me that uh, you felt bad about the tree because though uh, Ru could heal his broken wing, the tree would be left with the hollow. But I think there is some solace for the tree because the remnants of the nest is still in the hollow. Yeah. So it always remind uh, the tree about the companionship or the friendship with Ru. Yeah. And as Ru promised, probably Ru will turn up every season once in a year to actually uh, express his friendship or gratitude to the tree and the animals. So probably the tree will look forward to that meeting every year and yeah. Take comfort in that. I think the tree will look forward to it more than actually feeling sad about the hollow. Yeah. So I that's why that's why I thought that for the time that the Ru goes, that hollow space would be filled with that song. You know, right. the song would reverberate in its being. And he would feel that song and when he cannot contain it any longer, he breaks into the song. Right. So that's why. <laughs> So for me, I thought, Eric, that um, it is said that, you know, I mean, the way strangers actually became his friends. So uh, it is said that there are no strangers in the world, only friends we haven't met. So in a way, it kind of uh, reminded me of that also. And it's not necessary that all strangers will become friends, mm -hmm. but there can be some very good friends out there you don't know. <laughs> so right. that too. Go ahead. I think this is a great story. Wait, wait. Okay, go ahead. Uh, are, you, are you doing you or shall I do it? I'll do it. You do it. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. This is a great story on Friendship Day. Today's Friendship Day. So I think it is a great choice of story today. <laughs> Make us believe more and you know there are friends out too. So if you need help, sometime it will come back to you. <laughs> yeah. And Eric, when I was trying to think, I took this out and I thought when I sing the song, I'll use this. It's a prop. <laughs> but then when I was telling, I was so immersed in it that I just didn't think of anything. That's uh, it for me, Eric. Thank great. you so much for now, the lovely story you shared, which hmm. I could think of, you know, telling it in my own way. I great. really love that story. So thank you. Wonderful. Hema, you've you've moved indoors. <laughs> yeah. Kema, can you hear me? Yeah. I've been trying to get Yeah, I'm able to hear you. Is it all? Mm, 
voice is not coming too clearly. Voice is breaking up a little bit. But I'm able to hear you. Oh, okay. Now your voice is coming. Yeah, kindly bear with me, please. That's okay. Uh, did you see the feedback that I, I sent you by email this morning? Yes, thank you very much for that. And it was really uh, guiding me to take care of the nuances. I'll do that and record again another story. And, and I, I hope it was okay that I sent your stories to the group. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Great. Uh, those stories were recorded in a program called OPUS, which is, I think, uh, native to WhatsApp. But I sent them as attached files to an email. There's a program called VLC, which can play them. So if you, if you download them from the email, and you can download VLC for free, then you can play them with that. Um, yeah, so my main point was, I think, have you been a, a teacher or a, or a principal of a school, Hema? I'm uh, the founder of the school, and I've been a teacher. So. That's, it. That's it. So you, you uh, are telling in a style like uh, from a teacher or from a, a principal, um, somehow you need to, uh, you know, be, as I say, a little bit more um, uh, hmm? casual. casual. Enjoy the story. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it'll come. It'll come. Uh, yeah, uh, even Seema gave me this comment. Thanks, Seema. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. She had sent me the story. Oh, she already sent. So, yeah. So I listened okay. to it and I told him something similar. Similar to what you had written. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, yeah, Ma. Exactly. Hey, yeah. Ma, I have one request for you. Yeah, Vani. I'm not really very tech savvy. Can you send the story on WhatsApp group? Yeah, Maybe sure. Have you recorded it without the VLC player. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, so that we can listen. It's easier. To easier, yes. yes. Or put it on WhatsApp. I'll do that. Hey, Ma, I would suggest you record the same story again after the feedback. Wonderful. You know, that'll be good because then, you know, uh, before and after would be clear. So, yeah. So the same story after the feedback. Sure, sure. And practice once or twice and then record. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thank and you. If, you, if you do, the, the old woman who lives in the, in the bottle, um, do consider taking out one of those steps maybe. Because I, I think there were five steps, right? Uh, first, she, she wishes to live in a, in a, a little cabin with roses uh, coming up and down. Uh, then yeah. she wishes to live in a row house, which was yeah. very funny, right? Because that is a kind of modern element. Yeah. So you, you brought her into civilization with the row house. Then she wanted to live on a, in a mansion on top of a hill. Yeah. Then in a palace. Yeah. And then finally as the Pope. Yeah. Uh, so I think it, it either uh, maybe maybe skip the, uh, the 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 palace on the hill. Okay. Because the mansion. The mansion on the hill, because it, it okay. was, uh, uh, usually three times people like uh, often that repetition of the question, the answer, the fairy song. Three times is exactly. usually the uh, maybe four, but but oh. not not five. Um, okay. And. Um, you might consider changing it from the Pope to somebody else because, you know, the Pope is not really an Indian um, um, element, right? The Pope is the leader of the Catholic religion. Um, uh, uh, I've heard that story told where she wants to be queen of everything or okay. almost like she wants to be a goddess. And when she makes that request, it's too much and she ends up back where she started. There are many different versions of the story. Uh, okay. and, and always at the last step when she asks to be queen of everything or queen of the land or the Pope, that's when she falls all the way down. Yeah. So you might consider Indianizing it in some way uh, and skipping the, the reference to the Pope because um, that's really, 
you know, many of your students, many, many children who listen to the story in India won't have any idea who the Pope is or where, where he lives. Yeah. Yeah, uh, you're right. I agree with that. Okay. Uh, all right. Now, who else would anyone else prepare to tell a story? Janet, are you I'm ready to tell? I'm going to make this a little short. Okay. Please tell the. Yeah. Begin with the short sure. story. But I have one request. I don't want you to read it. No, no, I'm going to read it. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. So I'm just telling you parts of the story. That this story is called the. It's a story, it's a story of, of, um, of, of two gentlemen, gentlemen of Verona, written by A.J. Cronin. Okay, so um, and I'm gonna. So uh, to begin, take a deep breath, and really visualize the time and the place and the people, and then begin. Tell us what you see. Uh, so. I am the narrator in the story. I have put my place, myself in the place of the narrator. And so this, is a, this takes place in Verona. It's a city in Italy. And uh, while we went there as a tourist, and as we, I was driving around uh, uh, on the road, I suddenly noticed these two little boys who were selling wild strawberries. And uh, there was something about them that attracted me towards them. But of course, they were dressed shabbily. Uh, their hair was all tangled. They were very small boys. And uh, they, were, they came up to me earnestly and said, please buy, please buy a basket of these fruits, please. And they were almost begging me to buy this. And, uh, but my driver look, I took one look at these boys and said, don't buy it from them. They are so dirty, they're so unkempt, and I don't think you should buy anything from them. But I still wanted to help these boys. And so I picked up the biggest basket that they sold and I took it with me. And uh, the next morning when I came out again from my hotel, I saw these two boys uh, bending over, you know, shoe shining. I mean, uh, shining the shoes for some of the visitors who were there. They were in the square near the fountain and I shot, saw them doing this job. So I went up to them and I, um, and I told them, I thought you were selling fruits. How come you're doing this? And they said, oh, we do many jobs, sir. There are many jobs that we do. We sell fruits, we shoe shine, we hawk newspapers, we take uh, people to different places in Italy. There are lots of jo uh, jobs that we do. So if you need our help, you please call us and we'll be ready to help you. And in, uh, in, the, and in the meantime, I, uh, uh, we also found out that these two were brothers. 13, the eldest was 13 years old and the youngest was, um, and the younger one was about eight. Okay, so 13 years old, he was called Nicola and the younger boy was Jacopo. And these two brothers, every time we saw them, they were doing something or the other, some odd job, some errands for everybody and earning money. Every time I can see them doing this. So uh, I went up, I asked Nicola uh, the next day, when he said he will take us around the city, I said, okay, fine, take me around. I'd like to see the place. I'm here for this. And so while he was taking us around, I asked him, I said, from the little jobs I can see that you are doing, both of you, you're working so hard. I don't see you spending any money on your clothes because you're still wearing dirty clothes, shabbily dressed. I don't see you eating any food. And the only time when I saw you, you were eating black bread and figs. So uh, what do you do with all the money that you collect? What do you do with all the money that you're earning? So Nicola just put his head down, didn't want to answer. He felt bad to answer. Then, he, then uh, I said, uh, maybe you're saving money to emigrate to uh, the US. And then he said, yes, sir, we would love to go. There, but you know, we have more important work here right now. So we can't go. But he would not tell us why he was doing this, what exactly he was doing with his money, but nothing. But every time I saw him, he's doing some errand and surely he's getting paid for it. Like even late at night when I was returning, I saw them sleeping by the pavement and the little boy was already fast asleep. He had his head on his uh, brother's shoulder and he was fast asleep. And as I said, what are you all doing here so late in the night? He said, no, no, we are waiting for this bus that comes from 
some particular place. And uh, so when it comes very early in the morning, we will be able to sell all our newspapers to them. So that is why I'm waiting here for them. So then I said, okay, fine. I'm leaving tomorrow. And uh, is there anything I can do for you? Anything, any way I can help you? My heart went out to them. I said, these little, small little boys are always working and always doing something. No doubt they are earning money, but they are not keeping quiet. They are not relaxing. They are not doing anything. They just all the time. Do you need any help? No, sir. Thank you very much. We don't need your help. But Jacoba immediately jumped up and said, Sir, can you do us a favor? Even you are going, can you take us in your car? And drop us off at this place, a particular place we have to go to. Every weekend we go there. So can you take us there? But I had already told my driver that he can have the Sunday off. At the same time, I wanted to help these children. So I said, okay, I'll drive you there myself. I will take both of you there. And so I took the boys and uh, followed their directions. And I was looking to see some humble some place they wanted to see, but instead I went to a huge mansion, this is a big place. And uh, these boys, you know, they got off at the end of the road and said, you drop us here and we'll carry on. So you can leave us. And they jumped off and they ran away. But my curiosity was so much that I got out and I followed them. And when I followed them, it led me to a hospital. That place was actually a hospital. And then I followed them. I found a side entrance and I got into the side entrance and I, and I went inside. And then when I knocked on the door, there was a lady who came and opened the door and uh, she was dressed as a nurse. And uh, I told her, I was, I'm the one who brought the boys here. So can I come in? I want to see them. So she took me in and she told her, sure, there's a huge uh, glass partition. And uh, through the glass partition, I could see there was a cot a, a, a young girl was sitting on that cot. And these two little boys were sitting in front of her and talking to her. And uh, I was very curious to know what was going on and uh, why these boys had come here to see this girl. And so I asked the nurse, I said, please tell me. Because the boys did not tell me anything. They would not reveal anything about they would be, why they were collecting this money, where they were going, for who they were paying, nothing. So the nurse told me the whole story and she said that these two boys are the brothers of the girl who was sitting on the court. Her name was Lucia and she was suffering from tuberculosis. And these three children, she said, they were very rich and uh, their father was an army officer. He was also a singer. They had a lot of money, a lot of food. But uh, during the war time, the father was killed. And then later there was a bomb that fell on their house and their house was destroyed. So this brought them to the streets. So all three of them had no home. They had no one to help them. They were out on the streets. And so they had to learn to survive. They had to learn to work and to take care of themselves. And more importantly, these two boys, they wanted to do something for the sister who was suffering from tuberculosis. They wanted, they took her and put her in this hospital. And uh, they promised that every week they would come to this hospital and they would pay some some money towards her treatment and they were very keen that this girl should get better she was also a very good singer and so they were hoping for the day when she will get up and she'll walk she'll be able to sing and she could be she could live with them and so they did not what can you say leave any stone unturned they worked they did whatever job that came to their came to them, all little errands, little jobs, but they did not spend a pie on them. They saved all that money to pay to the hospital for their sister. And they were so, even though they were just tiny boys and they were, no doubt they were innocent, but on their face you could see the maturity which was far beyond their age. And as small as they were, they took on the responsibility to take care of the sister who was sick. They wanted to earn money and pay towards her, her treatment so she would get better someday. And so they did all the menial jobs, whatever jobs came to them, they did. They hardly ate any food. They slept on the pavement. They did not buy any clothes for themselves. 
They did nothing, even though every day they were earning some money. They kept it all aside and the boy used to go once a week to this place and hand it over to the hospital to see that the sisters, uh, the sister should get better. So he, he said they were, they were truly gentlemen. Even though they are little boys, you can call them, they were little gentlemen. Because see, they did not even want to discuss their family affairs with me. They did not want to say anything. They kept everything to themselves. They had a mission in life. They, this is what they wanted to do. And so they were noble, they were gentle. And so that is why I gave them the title of gentlemen. So they were like two gentlemen in Verona, even though they were two little boys who were actually living there and their whole life they were living for the sake of their sister. So this is, I've just shut the short story short. <laughs> so that really was the story of selflessness, of love, of dedication, nobility, so much in that which was attached to two little boys, which nobody expects. Because boys their age are doing other things. They're studying, they're playing, they get the best of food, they get the best of clothes, they want to get everything. But these boys made such a huge sacrifice for their sister. So that's, so that's the story. Right. Okay, so, um, so there was a title to the story. It was Two Gentlemen, Two Gentlemen of Verona. Of uh, and uh, wasn't there a Shakespeare play? Shakespeare, which came earlier, but that was a comedy. <laughs> yes. That was a different story altogether. <laughs> oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, but I think that was that, a play also. Yes. Yes. Okay, but so when you say two gentlemen of Verona were thinking Some about the Shakespeare, um, to me there were really two parts of the story. The the first part was um, that you. You really wanted to help them, yes. and uh, you know it was sort of a mystery to you why they were uh, earning money, and yet they still were dressed. So they were they were so dirty. They didn't spend anything on them. They were still shabbily dressed. They, they hardly ate any food, and uh, all the time it's either they're doing uh, hawking newspapers or they're shoe shining no. or selling okay. fruits or doing something. They did not waste that time, but they were just so have bent on working and earning money. Yes. So, that was the so, so then the, the turning point for that was that um, you finally said to them, uh, you know, why uh, you're earning money? Uh, uh, yeah, um, and uh, really you were suggesting that they might clean themselves up a little bit, even to be more successful business people. Uh, because somebody had even warned you, don't buy strawberries from these guys they're because they're don't buy yeah, it from them. They're so dirty. Just, just, you know, we have this difficult thing that uh, if I'm talking, you're on mute. So let me finish my talking, and then and then you come back. Um, so um, uh, so to me, the the turning point was um, you said, well, why you know why why don't you clean yourselves up a little bit? Why don't you um, uh, uh, you know, change, uh, and then and then that led into the second half of the story. Uh, so I'm not sure what the solution is. See, to me, the first story was about the the boys were dirty. You 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 bought strawberries from them. You made friends with them, and you said, "Why don't you you know clean up a little bit?" To me, to me, that was one story. And then the second story was how you solved the mystery by going to the hospital and finding out about their sister. Uh, but um, somehow it was, um, I was still, well, I guess it, it was unified. Of course it was unified because uh, the answer to the question of, of, of why they were still dirty uh, was solved, but not really. They They could they could clean themselves up and, and, and also contribute money for their sister's health. And by being dirty, they were damaging their own health. So, uh, so that's not a really a full satisfying answer uh, that, that they were helping their sister. Uh, so there's a, maybe a little bit more to it that they had suffered the shock of the, losing their house, losing their father. Um, 
But okay, so anyway, I just wanted to point out that for me, there were, there were two halves of the story, and I was not really prepared for the second half. Mm -hmm. I was more prepared when, when you confronted them and said, why don't you clean up a little bit? You'll have better business. Um, but it, it made sense because then you found out that's your reason. The, the reason, although I say I, I'm not satisfied fully with that reason. Uh, nobody would be fully satisfied because, as I say, they would do even better business and make more money for their sister and improve their own health if they would get cleaned up. But at least you got their answer. Yes. Their answer was, I can't clean up because I'm helping my sister. Okay. Um, Anyone else? Does anyone else? Uh, or did you want to uh, say any, anything? Uh, yeah, the is, uh, tiny boys. When all this mm. happened in the war, damaged the bomb, damaged their house. They had no place mm. to live. Father died. They had no one to take care of them. Mm. So they, no money also, naturally. No food, no money. Mm. So how are they to earn money? They had to go and do all these little small uh, errands and things to collect some money. But... Their, their noble cause, they had a noble cause. That they did it mainly to go and help their sister. They were very attached to the sister. The sister mm -hmm. was very fond of these two little boys. But unfortunately, she was uh, having a very uh, serious uh, disease, like, you know, tuberculosis is something very serious. She was not able to walk. She was hot. So they, had, mm -hmm. they put her in a hospital. And uh, they had no one to help them. There was nobody there to help them. So they were the only ones who were helping the sister. And so that is why they did not waste their money on anything. They didn't buy anything for themselves, nothing. They saved whatever they got. And every week they used to go to the hospital and uh, hand over the money to the, um, for the mm -hmm. treatment. And, but they did not discuss this with this man, with me. Okay, I'm the narrator, but they would not tell me this. It was very personal to them, you know, something that was so personal, they don't, they don't really want to discuss this, uh, this thing with you, with us and say, okay, I'm doing this only because I of this. No, they didn't tell till the end, till I found out myself, till I followed them and I went and the nurse told me this whole story. Till, or till then, I did not know the actual reason for all this. And so they had no means of uh, doing anything else. It's their best. Their best. Well, I, well I, I have added uh, to answer the second question that it would be more satisfying to me if somebody would tell these boys you know you're doing a wonderful thing for your sister but you can do it even better for your sister and for yourselves if you get cleaned up a little bit uh so that that would be my addition and and it's just additional chapter to the story uh, does anyone else want to uh, answer any of these four questions uh, uh what did you like any suggestions uh what does it remind you of um uh, or, or your, your takeaway. Any other thoughts on any of these points? Seema, did you want to? Yeah, so, so uh, first of all, um, the story was very moving. Um, that the boys, their age, that age are actually uh, saving money for their sister, basically. I mean, which was revealed in the end. Uh, when uh, she said that, why are you not, uh, why don't you clean up? I was wondering that uh, whether if they are not clean, maybe people will kind of take more pity on them and give them more work. That, oh, poor boys, let's give them something. Maybe that's the reason they're not cleaning up. I was wondering about that, um, you know, but when they did not say anything, and, uh, I think that was something which was, uh, and, and when the entire thing in the end came out that the sister was ill, it came out clearly. They did, did not want anyone's pity or sympathy. Yes. They wanted to earn through their own hard work rather than, you know, uh, being pitied or being said, oh, poor, poor kids kind of a thing, which uh, came through. And um, I am quite moved by the story. Um, uh, I am not so disturbed about their not being clean, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> Not so disturbed about that, uh, though I, you know, the, the thought in your heart is because I think uh, one always wants a happy ending that hope their sister gets well. Yes. And uh, it also made me think uh, or reminded me of the comforts our own children have, you know, uh, and uh, in a split second, we don't know things can vanish and things can change, but how equipped do we make our own children to handle any kind of thing or surprise which happens in life? So it just kind of made me wonder, like, you know, it's 
Yes, they were also everything. That everything disappears for the child. Yeah. There is no safety in the wall. Something has gone. And uh, uh, one thing I would like to add, the narrator, uh, do you have any empathetic approach towards the story? Uh, like uh, putting yourself to, to find out a solution. If you add that, I close. I, I think she asked, do you have an empathetic feeling for who? For the boys? Yeah. I, well, I think she communicated she felt very empathetic for the boys. What do, what do you mean, Hema? What steps did you take to make them uh, give up that uh, small errands and... Uh, Not quite making you out. But somebody made a good point a minute ago that um, they may be keeping themselves dirty as a um, as a tactic to um, to 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 get more money to to get pity. Uh, people do dress as beggars sometimes yeah. uh, and put on a beggar show, even yeah. if they have uh, more money and more clothes. Yeah. So uh, one more thing, um, I would like to make a suggestion to Janet that um, um, uh, it was very clear how empathetic you felt about the children. But when you tell the story, if, um, if you uh, make it a little more concise, you know, just kind of more dramatic and end at that rather than say what you feel, you know, um, towards the end so much, then the uh, person who's listening their feelings will get evoked a little more. I mean, if you, exactly. like, you know, like after the story, you kept explaining and explaining and explaining. So I, I personally felt that just give that pause, uh, like, you know, once it's kind of a dramatic thing and just get over with it and you stop there, then it's like, oh my God, like, you know, <laughs> it, it hits more. I, I felt that yeah, way. Yeah. That's, that's if you give it a uh, yeah, because you know all along. In fact, I cut, I told you I cut short the story because a lot more to be said in between. Yeah. Because whenever we, I try to help them, they refused. They did yeah. not want any money from us. Yeah. They didn't want our pity. Yeah. So and when why are you sleeping on the pavement and not uses? We are not complaining, sir. That's the reply you get from them. So, so add all that. Add their so We are doing it happily. Hmm. So I would yes. So so yes, what yeah. what um, Seema is saying is um, uh, it's not that the story was too long. We're interested in the in the plot developments, but uh, if there's a lot of commentary and explanation, that gets bogged down, and it's not necessary because uh, a lot of it we understood uh, from the story itself, and then when you explained it a second time. It, it, was just, it just wasn't, wasn't needed. Yeah, I know. I wanted to say, explain hey, why they were called gentlemen. The two, two gentlemen of Verona is what is the title of the story. Uh, so why? It's only about the two little boys. And, and because they were so noble, they were working for a noble cause. And uh, the selflessness of them. They didn't think about themselves. As you said, they could have, could have gone out and bought clothes for themselves. But they, but they did, did not want any, any money. Whatever they got, they kept it for the system. Because doing errands, they would not have got a lot of money. You know, mm -hmm. the money is just, uh, you know, limited amount they would have got every week. That they would have taken it as it is and gone to pay for the system. So that is the reason why they were also not uh, eating well, not dressing well, speak, sleeping on the pavement. And, but at the same time, they did not want any pity from anybody. They did not want any help. They wanted to do it themselves. And they were very noble about it. And they did not want to discuss their affairs, family, it is a personal thing to them. It's very personal. That's what I was trying to say at the end. Yeah. And truly they were like gentlemen. So that, that shows their character. <laughs> That's all. I have Go ahead. Uh, the thing is, I, I wondered, mm. uh, in the story they say the boy's dad mm. is a singer. He was, was a singer. He was, was famous. He was in the army also. 
I wonder why they don't have any friends around. I think there should be at least a few people who would know them, like family friends or neighbors or somebody. Yes, they lost their house uh, during the bombing. And then, yes, uh, their shelter was gone. But I think there should be at least few people, acquaintances at least. I, I wonder what happened to them. Everybody was involved in the war. Everyone was, yeah. you know, getting hurt. Something was happening. Bomb may not be only his house. Maybe other surrounding the houses. Entire locality. They were more bothered about cooking after themselves. Well, so, so what, so. what war was this? Some war. <laughs> I mean, how many years ago did this? Did you meet these boys? This this, this happened long ago. Long, 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 long ago. ago. And this, and this is what happened to them. Why they came to this? No, but I mean, like forty years ago. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> So, so, because, because of that, of that they, they, were, uh, they were having a very comfortable life. They were very rich. They, because of the father being in the army, they were rich. They had, uh, of course, they would have been dressed better. They would have had all the good things in life. But uh, in war, things happened. And so the father got killed. That's the first thing that happened. The next thing is the house was bombed. So they had no place to stay. No one to give them money. No money. No nothing. They came the to the streets. streets. Yeah. That's, That's what happened. And maybe at that time, they may, may, may not be the only ones. It would have happened, happened to many families. families so, this is one instance. Yeah. So, this, it sounds like this was World War II, which is... Um, yeah, German, I think so. Well, this is in Italy, it happened, yeah. right? This, this, you were, they are in Italy right now, but I think it happened, the war happened, there must be somewhere in Germany. Uh -huh. uh huh. But that's um fifty five. That's yeah. it's uh, seventy seventy years ago. Maybe you don't want to tell. You don't want to imply your age. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> I put myself in the narrator's place. Well, the, no. Were what you actually the visiting there? Is this a true? Oh, this is not a true story. It's not a true story. Oh, we thought all this while a story. Yeah. I put myself in the place of the narrator, oh. and I am telling you the story. Very, very good. That's how it's what it is. Right. It's, uh, yeah. it's uh, yeah. actually okay. a personal experience. Yeah. Okay, so you did a wonderful acting job. Yeah. Because yeah. we all thought this was a personal experience of yours. Yeah. Oh, so this and, is kept, and you I'm made even Eric that. think about your age. <laughs> Yes. Concerning their age and what they were doing. Yeah. And also, they never discussed anything. Okay. Very so that's good. what happened. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, we, uh, we have time if one more person wants to tell a story. Does anyone, have, did anyone come today ready, wanting to tell? I did, Eric. I did, but uh, the signal is so bad that uh, I don't know if I should go ahead. Well, go ahead. We're hearing you clearly. Okay, because I, I've kind of like connected back like three, four times. Uh, so you think I should just go ahead or you know? Go, think, ahead. Uh, go ahead. Okay. So uh, this story is, of, uh, you know, is from Cara Details. Can you all hear me? Yeah. Yeah, it's a very funny story. So I, I have not been able to figure out what the moral is. Uh, so you guys can tell me. So this is about a tribe of monkeys who are trying to go on a fast. So one day, a hot summer day, Chakrapani, the monkey chief, is sitting on top of a banyan tree and thinking. He's deep in thought. His monkeys were getting larger by the day. His tribe was growing larger by the day and not because of numbers. They were getting fatter and fatter. Now this was because Chakku and his tribe of monkeys were in a Shiva temple. So the devotees who would come there would feed, feed them all sorts of food. Curd rice, pongal, roti, sabzi. So the monkeys would eat pretty much everything. Can you hear me? Yeah. Super. Uh, Annapurna, we, we hear you just fine. Please keep going. She can't hear us. She can't hear us. Oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, well, there's a chat here. I'm going to write a chat. Uh, Anna, Purna, we can hear you. No, she's still confused. Can she read? Oh, oh, well. I think she's having some problems. Is, 
Okay. Now, th 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 there's one story about the monkeys that I know is that um, they had a big bunch of bananas. You know that one? I don't know if this is the one she's telling. And, um, you know, it has a big clump. Uh, but one monkey is saying, um, well, you know, it's dangerous to keep it in one clump because if an elephant comes, he can take it all at a batch. So I, I recommend that we break up the, the bananas and give one to each monkey. Uh, that way, each monkey can defend his or her own individual banana. So they all agree. Then that same monkey says, um, oh, but uh, if, the, if the banana is sitting there, uh, something could happen to it. It could get crushed. If it's open, an ant could come in. It may be best to keep the banana inside your mouth on the side of your mouth. Uh, but but the but, you know the the monkeys were fasting for some religious reason they were not supposed to eat until the evening but um but the same monkey said you know i think for for safety purposes we should each peel the banana and put it inside the mouth and keep it there safely does anyone object no. nobody objected <laughs> so uh so they all peeled the bananas and kept it on the side of their mouth and then, of course, many of them immediately ate it. They, they broke the fast incorrectly. So, uh, uh, okay, so what takeaway do, does anyone get from this story? <laughs> yes? It's the same story. She I don't know if it's the same. Uh, Anna, Anna Purna, can you hear me? No. She can't hear. Mm. Hi. Sorry. Yes, yes. Okay. Can you hear and can you hear my voice? I can hear your voice. Okay, I voice. I just told a, a story about some monkeys who eat bananas. Is that the same story yeah. that you were telling? Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So now go ahead. Tell it again. Go ahead. Yeah. So um, I was talking about Chief Chakrapani, and he was he was lost and thought he was very worried because. His tribe of monkeys were growing every day and not by number, but by size, they were getting fatter and fatter. And like, as I told you, they all were part of this temple, Shiva temple compound next to the banana grove. So they were pretty much eating the whole day. Curd rice and pongal and, you know, all sorts of prasad. But the monkey's favorite food was banana. Banana. Chips and chocolate we love to eat. Dosas and dhokalas are a treat, but the thing that we love the most is bananas, 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 chips and chocolate we love to eat. Dosas and dhokalas are a treat, but the thing that we love the most is bananas, 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 bananas. So Chakku was lost in thought. In fact, last week, Dinku had fallen from his favorite napping branch, Thud, because it couldn't bear his weight anymore. So as Chief Chakku was in thought, he heard the temple priest talk to the devotees. The temple priest was saying, tomorrow is Ekadashi, the 11th day of the waxing moon. It is a very good day to fast. And if you even meditate, that's even better because you would have cleansed both your body and mind. Aha, thought Chief Chapu. This was a wonderful idea. Why couldn't even the mon uh, monkeys go on a fast? He had decided that this was a great plan to execute. This way, if Ekadashi came often enough and they could manage to fast, they might just be able to lose some weight. So he gathers his whole tribe of monkeys and he says, listen, <clears throat> clearing his throat. Just then, the two tiniest monkeys, Bonnet and Macaque, are chattering over an apple. They're fighting with each other. He looks at them, glares, and he says, <clears throat> Bonnet and Macaque, stop it. Listen to me. Tomorrow is Ekadashi. What? Ekadosha? Says Bonnet. He says, no, Ekadashi. Wait, listen to me. Tomorrow is Ekadashi, the day of fasting. Oh, you mean eating the dosa really fast, says Makak. He says, Makak and Bonnet, please listen to me fully first. As I said, 
tomorrow is ekadashi a day of fasting so we will not be eating anything the whole day <gasps> suddenly everybody is like gasping in shock what not eat the whole day not possible so then bonnet says breakfast breakfast that we can have chief chakku says no no breakfast what about lunch asks makak no breakfast no lunch no dinner surely we can have some nuts says bonnet bonnet and makak i said no breakfast no lunch no dinner no nuts no nothing so then and while uh, the wise old monkey gets up and says yes 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 chief chakku is absolutely right no eating anything tomorrow except bananas so chief chakku said no no bananas too we are going to go on a complete fast which means we're not eating anything from morning to night and as a bonus we are going to chant we are going to try and meditate that way we'll become a tribe of calm peaceful and intelligent monkeys saying that you know he's relent and he said okay chief done tomorrow is our day of fast so he says fine tomorrow we wake up in the morning meet on the temple terrace and go on our fast he is super excited but not so the other monkeys next morning it's early morning dawn and chief chunk chakku assembles all his monkeys together on the temple terrace and he starts om namah shivaya om namah shivaya suddenly chief chakku chief chakku chief chakku is irritated opens his eyes it's bonnet it's too hot chief chakku can we go sit in the banana grove that way the banana leaf trees will protect us from the hot sun and it will be more comfortable to fast so chief chakku says fine i don't see a problem let's all shift to the banana grove so all the monkeys scurry up to the banana grove and they sit down he says fine everyone settled okay so let's start chanting om namah Hi. Who just one minute, Chief Chapu? It was Makak. He says, Makak, what is it? We're trying to do something seriously here. Chief Chapu, that way we'll also be concerned for those who grab it. Um, Chief Chapu was not too sure, but he relents. He says, Fine, let's climb up the banana trees. all the monkeys you know even before being told completely scurry up to the top of the banana trees and sit on the branches they close their eyes chichu chakku says no more distractions up huh? let's start meditating they start om namah chief chakku chief chakku one minute chief chakku so chief chakku is really irritated and he looks up it's bonnet again i was thinking chief chakku why don't we hold a banana in our hands you know that way we can focus on the meditation and you know we don't have to wait for too long after the uh, fast we can break the fast and the bananas right in our hands uh chief chakku said i don't think that's a very good idea but before he could even complete the sentence all the monkeys plucked a banana each and then they sat ready to meditate with a banana in their hands he gives up he says fine whatever works let's get on with the meditation he closes his eyes and he says om namah shivaya om namah shiv one minute chief chakku one minute i have one more thing to say it was makak he says fine get done with it what is it i'm thinking we should peel this banana you know let's make it easy for all of us so we'll all be hungry and tired after the chanting it's all ready and peel all we have to do is bite I don't think that's going to happen Chakku said but who's going to listen everybody peels their bananas and they said chief we are ready to meditate so with bananas peeled all the monkeys sit straight ramrod ready to meditate again and then they start chanting om namah shivaya om namah shivaya chief chakku chief chakku one last thing chief chakku so chief chakku is now very doubtful about this whole exercise but he gives in 
He says, what is it, bonnet? Does it make a difference if we have the banana bite in our mouth, you know? Let's just keep it here, you know? It's not going into the stomach, right? So technically, we're still fasting. As soon as it's dusk, then we all we have to do is swallow. It's so much more easier. Everybody nodded their heads and they said, oh my God, Bonnet is so intelligent. When did he become so intelligent? So everybody, even before Chaku could said yes, no, anything, they just bit off and then they had like one cheek full of bananas and they were trying to fast. Not sure what to do next. Chik Chaku said, fine, get on with it. Let's start chanting together. So suddenly in unison with, you know, bananas in their cheeks, they were like, Om Namah Shivaya. Om Namash, and then Makak says, one last thing, Chik Chaku, please, please, does it make a difference if the banana is in the mouth or if it's in the Surely it's all down here. The banana in their cheeks followed suit, and soon all the monkeys had broken the fast. Chief Chaku didn't know where and when he went wrong and he was wondering what to do. And he's still waiting for the next Ekadashi to come back. <laughs> so do you think the monkeys will be able to keep the fast next Ekadashi? No. no. <laughs> Definitely no. <laughs> okay, my yes. humble attempt, Eric. Yes, yes. So, uh, when you, your image got frozen and you, you went away and you came back, during that uh, 30 seconds, I, I, I told the story also, but you told, okay. it, you told it much better than me. <laughs> okay, I tried because, you know, I, I, feel, I feel I'm like the most the in terms of, I can write very easily, but when I have to narrate, I don't, you know, so please give me feedback. Yeah. You are, you're telling in a very natural way, in a very warm way, very engaging. It's okay. Good, it's good telling. Mm? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Hamer, <laughs> did you want to say something? Yeah, this is uh, the take home is uh, the discipline. The way it is supposed to be done is to be followed. Right. Uh, a, a message that I get from it is that um, we should not tempt fate. <laughs> you know, if someone says, do not cross that line, we should not even get close to the line. Because. Uh, right. You know, accidents happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. True. Go ahead, Vani. Yeah. Uh, hi, Anupama. I love the story. Yes, it is hilarious. Though uh, Dr. Eric already narrated it within uh, one minute, probably. <laughs> so he knew what would happen. Still, I had a lot of fun. The thing yeah. is, I want to tell a funny thing here. You can never force anyone to diet unless they make up their minds to actually Absolutely. diet or like, you know, restrain from food. <laughs> Especially no. <these>. And even <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah. We all enjoyed the story, Annapurna. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. You 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 conveyed it like a mother telling a story to the child to a child. We were all children here. I became a child here, listening what is going to happen and all. Yeah, it, was, yeah. it was so uh, you know it was very uh, emotional actually. Thank you. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Actually, one could see all those steps, like, you know, when they're holding the banana and trying to chant and one Yeah, yeah. We imagine these... things, uh, we could see yeah. visions here. <laughs> yeah, you can always, you know, I mean, you could almost see that, you know, he would have opened one eye, looked around, opened the other one. Okay, now can I say something? And, you know, it, it was very nice. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Each step. 
and especially yeah. with the thing in the mouth with the way you <laughs> yeah yeah that's my favorite part you know when they're all trying to like you know keep it in the mouth and not swallow yeah <laughs> you could actually do it with a holding a banana and almost banana. eating <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> i think the chief should be little strict more strict like a chief like yeah. the head but i doubt it will work okay shivani <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, anybody would listen to him for the thing. I think it talks about internal discipline. Yes. It has to come from within. Yeah. One thing I want yeah. to say uh, is uh, actually yeah, good point. Uh Annapurna you can listen? Yes, yes, I can hear. Tell me. Huh. Yeah. I I found something like not uh, exactly up to it. You said Ekadashi and you said Om Namah Shivaya. I think it should be either Shivratri or you should change the god. Uh, if it is Ekadashi, it should be Vishnu. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Somehow the book the book has Om Namah Shivaya. Okay, so I just stuck to that. <laughs> you should make it Shivratri. Ekadashi is yeah. Balaji. What is Ekadashi for? <laughs> Balaji or Vishnu? Ah, uh, ah, uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good point. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Okay. Very good. Yeah, you have a, a certain spontaneity in your telling, uh, but at the same time, it was very um, organized and very, um, you know, uh, smooth. But somehow there was a feeling of spontaneity and uh, rela relaxation in, in your telling at the same time. Right. So it's okay. a good it's a good okay. combination. Okay. Okay. And uh, again alternating between talking and singing. This was a religious song, but again that alternation really uh is very nice. It's very lively. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay, Thank so you. now we have one more session. So this last right. week uh please anybody make recordings, send recordings, send written versions uh and um and and be ready to uh to tell a story uh next week if if you like uh in addition to uh sending any recordings or written versions um okay and uh again if anyone wants to meet one be one on one let me know hey ma we were supposed to have a meeting i hope we can still have a meeting but uh i yeah. think yeah. we have to yeah. where where are you are you in the mountains someplace pardon Where where are you located today? Uh, today I'm in my native place, Tripur. Ah, uh -huh. uh, but the, somehow the connection is not strong. Yeah. Uh, uh, so d d d d next week, everyone try to have a a good connection, and and I I think usually a, a laptop will 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 get a, a better um, result than a than a mobile phone usually. Right. Uh, so if possible, okay. use a, use a laptop. Um okay so shall we end the session now? Oh no first yep. we have to first we have to end the recording. Let me end the recording. Uh stop recording. This was um today was session 7 on August 5th 2018. And now we're stopping the recording.